first item is to accept or modify the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Next up is Mr. Chairman, I missed who the second was. I'm sorry. That's okay. Kathy, I thought the second did. No? Maybe we didn't have a second. Second. Oh, got one now. Yes. Sorry. I thought <laughs> Sorry. I heard that interruption. No, you're fine. You're fine. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. Uh, next, consent agenda. Approval of March 17, 2021 clerk reports. Uh, well, can we make a motion to change the... Well, that would be for the action agenda. We're going to change the action agenda. Yeah. So I move that we accept the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carrying none. Motion carried. Next up is the action agenda. And I'd like to move two items up from our work session, the VDOT presentation and the memorandum of understanding for the resource officers. Office. Excuse me. Can't speak. Um, so could I have a motion to move B and C, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I would, I would make a motion that we adjust the agenda so that uh, item B would be the presentation by VDOT and that item C would be the memorandum of understanding for school resource officers. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, first up on the action, action agenda, adopt a resolution requesting the Board of Supervisors to issue general obligation bonds to refund an existing bond. Dr. Ballinger, please. I'm having some technical difficulties. Me too. You're up now. Okay. okay. Um, can you all hear me? This is Ted Cole with Davenport. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, okay, not great, um, and I apologize. I've been trying to get on by my computer, so I'm on just by phone right now. Okay. Um, but um, if you're hearing me okay, I'll just I'll set it up here on the front end. There is a uh, brief resolution that was drafted by the county's bond attorney, Sands Anderson, um, to move forward with the refunding of the 2014 bond through the Virginia Public School Authority's spring sale, uh, which is scheduled for April 20th. Um, I attended the county board meeting last night and presented uh, an update on the refunding. Um, they had a resolution uh, that they adopted as well. Uh, so their actions have been taken to move this forward. Uh, keep in mind, the county board's resolution did include a minimum level of savings that would need to be achieved in order for this to move forward. So in other words, there is protection that if interest rates rise and savings fall below the parameter, uh, that you don't have to move forward or you won't move forward with the transaction. So there is a safeguard there. Y'all, the school board, your, your resolution is a little bit more simple and straightforward, um, but it's you know authorizing certain parts of this to move, or the transaction to move forward in a way that is consistent with the county board's resolution. Mr. Chairman. I was allowed to make a motion, but um, should I read the explanation first? Yes. Read that out. The county has identified a current school-related bond, the 2014 VPSA, that if refunded or refinanced at current market rates would save the county an estimated $1,171,787 over the remaining life of the bond. This bond funded the construction of the new middle school, now named Warren County Middle School. The county has requested the school board to adopt the resolution I will present so that they may proceed with the application to refund these bonds and realize the associated savings. It is proposed to refund those, these bonds through the spring 2021 Virginia Public School Authority 
BPSA bond issuance. And uh, the motion is, I move that the resolution requesting the Board of Supervisors to issue general obligation bonds for school board purposes and consenting to the issuance thereof be adopted as presented. Second. Do a roll call, Mr. Ballantyne, please. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wells? Yes. Dr. Pence? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. Mr. Rinaldi? Yes. Okay, motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Take care. Next up, we'll have the VDOT presentation on the closure of Happy Creek Road. Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter to okay. get on. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Uh, next up will be a memorandum of understanding for school resource officers. Ms. Shepard. Thank you. Policy KNAJ relations with law enforcement authorities requires the school board and the sheriff's office to have a memorandum of understanding or MOU that sets forth the powers and duties of the school resource officer. This MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, is reviewed and affirmed or amended at least once every two years. The revised MOU is modeled after the Virginia School Law Enforcement Partnership Model Memorandum of Understanding developed by the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services. Warren County Public Schools and the Warren County Sheriff's Office have worked collaboratively to ensure the MOU aligns with our policies and practices. The partnership between the school system and the Sheriff's Office is intended to facilitate effective, timely communication and coordination of efforts for both parties. The MOU establishes a framework that both the schools and the Sheriff's Office can work within to achieve shared goals. The primary goals of the partnership are to create and maintain safe and secure school environments and to promote a positive and supportive school climate. The Warren County Sheriff's Office will provide 10 law enforcement officers employed by the Warren County Sheriff's Office to serve as SROs, school resource officers, for Warren County Public Schools. The SROs assist with matters related to the safety and security of the school. Further, SROs will help school administrators in developing school crisis and response plans. They will work with administrators in problem solving to prevent crime and promote safety in the school. SROs serve multiple roles in the school that are interrelated, but their ultimate purpose is to contribute to school safety and security and promote a positive and supportive school climate. No motion is necessary at this time, as this will be presented at the April 7th school board meeting for consideration. So we have worked with the, the Sheriff's Office and with our attorney and both groups um, and ourselves and um, have, improved, have approved the content and the memorandum of understanding. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I don't, don't have any questions, but um, this is um, something that came out maybe last year when Mr. Williams, you and I met the school resource officers yeah. and that kind of thing is is it possible that we could ask the sheriff's office to have those SROs maybe have at the at the individual schools maybe have a meeting with parents to explain to one to, to let them know who their who their SRO is at their child's school and what their what their duties are and that kind of thing just sort of an information yeah. session or something like that just so that there's there's not this separation and that 
the parents know who their SRO is and can yep. familiarize themselves with it. Yep, absolutely. And it could be um, one of those activities that we could do um, at the beginning of the school year as well. Each year, kind of the back to school event, part yes. of that. But yeah, that's part of you know part of their um, their duties. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great idea. The, the thought process was that mm -hmm. you know, so that they don't meet them under uh, strenuous circumstances okay. or under yeah. so that in, they in know our, who they are. Yes, our school resource offices are in our cafeterias, in our hallways, they're greeting students as they enter the, the building. So yes, and that this would just be one more extension of, of that. So perfect. Didn't they, Mr. Wells, do like uh, PTA meetings or something like that last year? I think they were going to. I don't know if it got completely carried out or not, but that would be a, a, a possibility yeah. or a great place for it. I like it, and I'll share that with the principals as well because they um, they do help manage the SRA's time. So absolutely. Thank and Mr. Wells, and I know the sheriff is a big proponent of, of outreach with the department and with the SROs into the community. So sure. I had a conversation with him just the other night about outreach with, with his officers. Okay. Thank you. All Any right. other questions? Anything else from you, Shepard? All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I think we have Mr. Carter with us now. Mr. Carter, can you hear us? You'll need to unmute. Yes, I, I can hear you. I, I apologize. I had trouble getting in. All right, Mr. Carter, so uh, we are now to the point of the uh, the work session to discuss the uh, closure of Happy Creek. So I'm just going to let you have the floor. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I talked to the superintendent. We uh, advertised the project that would close uh, to improve Happy Creek Road from the town limits Allen out to Manassas Run Road. As part of that advertisement, there's a 2,700-foot uh, section in there that uh, we had agreed to close for the contractor to eliminate some maintenance of traffic issues, save some time and some money during the summer after school closed. The original contract called for him to be completed by August the 10th which is when your school session would uh, open back up. That was all predicated on the utility companies having all of their facilities out of their way in time for him to start on June the 14th. Since that time, the utility companies were delayed uh, or uh, maybe I should say just late in submitting their permit applications to the railroad company. As of last week, they have not received those permit applications back, which in turn uh, jeopardizes their delay in getting their utilities out of the way for the contract. For what we were, I uh, approached the county for a uh, notification purposes and are now approaching the school board for notification purposes is that we might uh, be a couple of weeks late in getting the project complete and the road open back up. I talked with uh, the school superintendent about this and he said that he would prefer not to change this current schedule, but to address the issue if it comes up uh, before school starts. It's quite possible that they will make their date uh, and that we, everything will be fine and we will not have to keep the road closed any longer. Mr. Carter. Yes, sir. The section that you're closing, is that like the S-turns? From, uh, from it, like Baldur State? 
It's a 2,700 foot section after Leach Run Road before you get to the railroad tracks. Uh, Tim, do you have a, the uh, overhead of that? Uh, he's, hang on a second. Tim's on his way up. So, okay. Yeah. So when we were looking at, you know, do we need to look at adjusting our calendar because of the delay, not knowing whether they will get it still completed by the 10th, or if we go ahead and push school back, then is there still a chance that it may not be completed then? So then you're still dealing with the, the closure of the road. So we need to, you know, we may have to deal with the closure no matter if we move school, the start of school, or keep the start of school where it's currently at. Um, so that's kind of the discussion that we that we had as far as what we need to do as a school system. Do we want to go ahead and, and deal with the headache and work through it or plan on opening later, but still possibly have to deal with the closure if they're not completed by that in that time frame? I, I, I would like to add that we will know uh, no later than the 1st of July whether or not we can meet that schedule. Okay. In, in that case, uh, I would suggest that we wait until the 1st of July because I would hate to adjust the school schedule now and then like that have the same situation. I'd, I'd rather have the, the interruption the what we have to deal with once rather than twice. Yeah. Absolutely, but we need, if you have to make a decision July 1, we need to know that it's gonna be done. Because yeah. I don't wanna move school. And I guess the biggest concern would be the bus routes. Yes, was, sir. Was what the, the hindrance would be for us. So I just assume leave it unless we knew for sure it was gonna all open up you know, at the same time. And Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Mitchell's here, and I know he has already routed in anticipation of this, and he can kind of, did you, Aaron, did you say, what, how much time was that going to add to current bus routes? We're going to 15 to 18 minutes. Is that in any There could be some impact on summer school depending upon where students live, so that would be, Another issue that as we work through summer school and then work with transportation on that, that we would have to allow for, for those those delays or, or the rerouting of buses for summer school. It, it honestly won't be as impactful for summer school because we don't have, we're not on tier times. So it, just that route just may be a little bit later. Our challenge for in school is that first run and accommodating that delay into the second run. That's where our challenge is at. So we'll be we'll be okay for summer school. He doesn't have the number. Okay, that's okay. And Mr. Carter, we don't have that 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 picture. So yeah, I mean, but but the road will be open where Warren County Middle is at, Leach Run Parkway. We can get in and out there. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, it's. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear a question about the road. So, at least from our Parkway would be open yes, where Warren County Middle School is. School is. That's correct, Access. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, the people would be affected. The, the, the detour route is about seven miles one way. That is from uh, the intersection of Leach Run and Happy Run, uh, Happy Road, Happy Creek out to 55 and 55 over to Dismal Hollow and Dismal Hollow back to Abbey Okay. Thank you, Mr. And, and please, please remember that we, if, if there's any way possible, please, our contractor will be working seven days a week to get that piece done in there. Because he doesn't want to work on the traffic any more than, than he has to either. Um, we'll be doing 
everything possible to meet the August 10th date, it's quite possible that we can do that. And, and so you'll give us more of a, an understanding of where you're at on July 1. Well, sir, we will know by July 1 whether or not we cannot, uh, we cannot meet that date. Okay. If we can't meet the date, uh, then it, and it, it's going to create uh, a lot of problems. Maybe we can work with the school board in having one-way traffic, which is going to mean if we do it under traffic, that it would have one lane closed at a time or perhaps closed for an hour or two before opening back up. So we would try to have to work so that during the bus times uh, in the morning that one-way traffic might be coming in from uh, the Chandler Riverside and the evenings it might be closed uh, the other direction so that we can get the buses three but there is we have to do that there is going to be some delay uh in that in the time frame okay and and this project is slated to start the day after we get out of school or when is the start date of this project well actually they will start on uh, june the 10th if the utilities are out of the way but they, they will not be impeding traffic until after the and the road would not close until after the 14th the day that you're out of school okay all right you guys have any more questions anything else mr carter thank you very much mr carter we appreciate your information you're quite welcome and i appreciate the board's time please do not hesitate to call me uh, if you have any further concerns on it as we get closer and as progress is made uh, we will keep the uh, Cam and uh, Dr. Bellinger uh, informed of what's going on. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Next up is approval to request appropriations of the physical 2020 school operating surplus. Dr. Ballinger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The audit firm Robinson Farmer Cox Associates PLLC presented the county's fiscal year 2020 audit to the Board of Supervisors at their March 9, 2021 meeting. The audit report shows that the school operating budget surplus for the fiscal year 2020 to be $2,380,365. It is recommended that the approval be given to request the reappropriation of the full amount. It is further recommended it be appropriated as follows. One million to the Capital Improvement Fund, 1 million to establish a transportation fund for the replacement of school buses and other transportation vehicles, $380,365 to the textbook fund. All right. Questions for Dr. Ballinger? Comments? A motion. I move that the suit. Go ahead. I move that the superintendent be authorized to request that the Warren County Board of Supervisors appropriate the fiscal year 2020 school operating surplus in the amount of $2,380,365 as follows. $1 million to the school capital improvement fund, $1 million to the school transportation fund, and $380,365 to the school textbook fund. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, hearing none, motion carries. Next will be Wilson Elementary School Fencing, Mr. Livesey. Thank you, Mr. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, e. Wilson Elementary, due to safety concerns at E. Wilson regarding public access and use of the school facilities or grounds, after normal school hours, staff has had to implement several new security measures. Uh, to improve the overall safety and security of that school site. Uh, improvements to date have included increased video surveillance, additional cameras, additional site lighting on the back of the building, along with signage. Uh, in addition, the current four foot high chain link fencing that is there now doesn't provide adequate safety really for the hard surface play area directly behind the school uh, that fencing is, separates the travel lane, which separates the hard surface play area 
uh, from the playground and the modular classrooms, if you're familiar with the site. Uh, staff, we have plans to replace approximately 540 linear feet of the four foot high chain link fence with a six foot high metal or ornamental fencing with appropriate gates in the driveway, which will be used to control that traffic flow behind the school after normal school hours. Um, staff, we solicited three proposals for this work with two bids received. Um, McCrane Fence Company was the lowest responsive bidder at the price indicated in the agenda item. Any questions? Is, is, is <coughs> Gonna affect the video surveillance? No. Okay. No, no that's, impact. That. That's my only question. The gates will be closed when school's not in session, is that that's correct? The end, yes. So weekends and evenings people won't be able to cut through. To cut through. Okay, now will people still be able to access the playground area and use that? Uh yes, from uh, actually the one in the Chester Street side, they will be able to access that parking lot there and there's access gates onto the hard surface play area. It is the activity on the hard surface play area, the basketball courts, that's created some of the concerns over there. But that will still be accessible. Yes, it will. But the, it could also be to where we could close it if that continues to persist, those issues persist that we need to to make that happen for, for a short period of time and then open them back up. It just gives us more flexibility in being able to control um, some of the, the issues that we have been experiencing at E. Wilson Any other questions? I move that approval be given to award a contract to McGrain Fence Company in the amount of $34,725 to install new six foot high metal fencing with driveway gates at E. Wilson Elementary. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you. Next will be award a contract for the purchase of eight school buses. Mr. Mitchell. Relatives. I don't get to do this one very often. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, in an effort for us to update and maintain our school bus fleet, uh, we're requesting that we can purchase eight Thomas school buses. These will all be 77 passenger buses. They will be diesel, and they will all be to Warren County Public School specifications that we built uh, five years ago. And the buses that we purchased previous are all that specification. Um, and I'm really excited that one of the buses that the 77 passenger will be outfitted for special needs. So it's wheelchair accessible, so that those students no longer have a barrier when we're doing field trips or anything like that. We're, we're really reaching that, that ultimate level of inclusion to even include transportation now. How long does it take to get these buses? <laughs> June. June. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Jim's not that far away. No, and I'll be honest with you, um, we're really, really blessed to have a great working relationship with Sonny Merriman. Um, the, the bus manufacturer, a couple weeks ago, when we felt like this may come to be, actually was able to get us in the manufacturing lineup even without having it approved. Otherwise, we would not be getting them in June. We probably would not have them in time for, for school. So they, they're, they're, they're a great partner. Yeah, you spoke highly of them before. They, 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 they work are. with you and done things. That Absolutely. Kind of. That's good. That's good. You have a motion. I move approval be given to purchase eight school buses from the Thomas Bus Company for a price not to exceed $935,000. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Next, stay where you are. Um, award contract for transportation copier lease. Mr. Mitchell. Uh, our current RICO printer and copier is uh, nearly 10 years old and, and she's due for replacement. Um, uh, we were able to ne negotiate an even reduced price. Um, we were actually a little bit cheaper than 
the other vendors that were servicing the other schools. And RICO has been great for us for the past 10 years. Um, case in point, when we went to do our last mailers, the copier died that day. And they had a tech out there in an hour and got us back up and going. It wasn't pretty, but we were up and going. So they're, they're a good partner to work with for us. So not the same contract we had with all of those? Correct. You got a better price. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Mitchell? I asked a few questions prior to the meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not good. Okay. Everybody good? We have a motion. You need a motion? Yes, sir. Uh, I move the approval be given to the Transportation Department to lease a Rycoat copier printer in the amount of $217.94 per month. We have a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Next up is increase hourly rate for summer school staff to attract candidates. Mr. Smith. Good evening. Warren County Public Schools has offered summer school opportunities for students for many years. Our summer school program is uh, for the summer is slated for 10 days. In recent years, um, it has become increasingly difficult to attract the amount of staff needed uh, with the current hourly rate. Uh, this summer will provide an additional challenge to secure staff due to the short summer break. Uh, it's recommended to increase the hourly rate of the summer school administrator uh, from 35 to 45 per hour to increase the summer school teacher from 25 to 35 per hour and to increase the summer school instructional assistant uh, positions from $10 an hour to 15 and it's merely to be able to get the number of staff that we're going to need in order to run a summer school. I have a question about rates, but are we going to have summer school in each school or are we just going to have it in a couple of different schools? So we're going to look, some schools will probably be combined. We're going to look at our numbers and we have set those, but it's all going to be ran, the entire division will be ran from the same time period. Uh, your high schools may go a little bit longer depending upon uh, credit recovery or different things that they need to do there but for elementary and middle K through 8 will all be ran um, I believe it's the 23rd through the 15th um, correct me if I'm wrong on that Alan but I think it's the 8th I believe uh, through the 8th I think here. through the 8th okay so thank you Mrs. Russo uh, so we're going to run everybody through that same time period so we will have the flexibility of putting students in schools if we don't have numbers so there is no reason if if for instance we have five students at as roads and we have four students at e wilson morrison that we just do not combine those into one one setting um, so so we will look at those and i know our middle schools have already talked about partnering and running a co-program between both middle schools so we are going to combine those as well. Yeah, we're, we will be sending out our, our flyers shortly. I know the team's been working on those flyers that we will get out to the schools and then the schools will also be looking at, you know, making recommendations based off of this year um, to see what students they may want to recommend or what parents want their children to come. And so we will be getting that information out shortly to, to really solidify what we're going to be able to do this summer. I would anticipate a pretty good turnout. I think we're going to, our, we think our numbers may be a little higher, yeah. um, but also with the, the shortened summer going into the school year, um, there's there's not a long break for, for our teachers. Right. right. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Smith, about college? We have a motion. I move that the Warren County School Board approve the hourly rates for a summer school administrator at $45 an hour, summer school teachers at $35 per hour, and summer school instructional assistants at $15 per hour. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Next is approval for purchase over $15,000. Ms. Rudisill.
Good evening. Good evening. We would like to request funds for the renewal of Frontline PD, our professional development management system, and the amount of $17,355.82. Frontline PD, which was formerly known as My Learning Plan, houses our staff professional development offerings, keeps track of professional staff's license renewal points, and provides a mechanism through which professional development can be approved toward relicensure efforts. Any questions? Do they actually offer classes for the teachers? No, it is the management system. Okay. So the courses that are offered are either offered uh, from us locally or the the outside conferences and courses that teachers are taking, they're able to log them in Frontline PD so that when it's time for them to renew their license, then they just print out one portfolio that has everything they've participated in and how many points they've earned through those things. Have, yes, yes, we used my learning plan. We've been using it for years and years and years. So they've changed last year. We changed to a different company. Um, and it was unsuccessful so we went, <laughs> we went back to this uh, this company this year and they've actually made quite a few improvements uh, to the system of course transitioning from a system even if you've been with them before is slightly painful but um, so we're back to using it's, it's just under a different name now yes for one year yes does that tie into Mr. Smith's area as far as he has all that information for right they oddly enough they do not communicate with one another um, even though they're both frontline products and they they do not communicate with one another unified talent is through um, where human resource records are managed we had unified talent last year the PD version which again they do not communicate and the human resources, I think that uh, Mr. Smith would say his department's had lots of luck with the human resources part of Unified Talent, um, but the PD part is, is separate. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? I move that the Frontline PD Professional Development Management System be purchased in the amount of $17,355.82. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Next, Ms. Rudisill, approval of preschool curriculum adoption committee. The school division would like to convene a committee to review curriculum materials to best serve our preschool students. We are asking the board to approve the proposed members of this committee as presented. And as you can see down that list, we have preschool, all of our preschool teachers, so that covers uh, four of our five elementary schools actually house programs. We have two kindergarten teachers we've asked to serve on this committee, two of our elementary administrators, and then Jenny Donovan and myself. Questions? Looks like a good slate of people. Yeah. I move that the preschool curriculum review committee be approved as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Rudisil. Uh, up next is approval of memorandum of understanding with the Warren Coalition. Mr. Hurst. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Superintendent. It's being asked that Warren County Public Schools enter a memorandum of understanding with the Warren Coalition to provide a variety of evidence-based programs to a host of Warren County Public School students. Programs address bullying, making healthy choices, and emotional intelligence. This helps students to be aware of, control, express emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships, not only judiciously, but with empathy. These evidence-based practices programs are the Life Skills Curriculum, that's done at the middle school, grades six through eight, um, and also students that attend Brighter Futures. The HALO program is for preschool students for students with disabilities, and the Too Good for Drugs program is for ninth grade students and students that attend Diversified Minds. A second step program, it's not in this part of this MOU, but that's coupled with the middle school program um, to address, to further address bullying and bullying prevention. Um, bullying prevention is what it, what it addresses at the middle school, but it's not part of this MOU. I did attach a program description 
of each of these programs. They are evidence-based. Um, it is a, a state grant uh, flow through to federal money. There's no cost to, to Warren County Public Schools. And uh, a significant amount of research has been, been done to, to select these programs and, and, and implement them in the school system. Do you have any, any questions? Will these be called? Will it be health class? Will it be? Each school does it differently. Some schools have some flex periods in between lunch. Some schools uh, do it during uh, physical education. But the Warren Coalition staff works with each building principal to uh, implement that so the least amount of time is taken away from, from uh, the core content areas. How uh, the programs are done throughout the year, they're done in modules. I move that Warren County Public School Board enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Warren Coalition to offer evidence-based programs to students throughout the division. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Hirsch. Seeing nothing else on our agenda, meeting adjourned.